hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansi. In our top story, with the state of the territory being postponed, many residents in the Virgin Islands are apprehensive of what measure and steps are needed to address the increase in fiscal concerns. The state of the territory will set the site for the MAP administration's goals for 2017. News 2's Richard Dorsey files this report. With the state of the territory postponed due to Governor Kenneth E. Mapp's illness, Virgin Islanders are holding their breath to see what the 32nd legislature and the administration is going to do in regards to the fiscal crisis of 2017. Governor Mapp at a press conference last week stated that, We need to make a serious decision. And that serious decision is to implement a financial plan to remove the continuing structural deficits of the government of the Virgin Islands. Issues leading up to our current fiscal state include our energy sector, health, finances, as well as services provided by the government of the Virgin Islands. With the three credit agencies downgraded the Virgin Islands bond status, investors are declaring that they need a fiscal plan in order to continue supporting the Virgin Islands bonds. While the governor's five-year plan, including sin taxes, seeks to address the financial issues, other sectors such as health, energy, and tourism are going to face their own challenges in 2017. Richard Dorsey. Meanwhile, already back in the swing of things at the 32nd Legislature, Senator Alicia Chucky Hansen has responded to the latest special meeting held by the administration by stating that the fiscal situation must be addressed with the utmost transparency. Senator Hansen noted the lack of fiscal clarity on the actual amounts included in the proposal. Here's more. Senator Chucky Hansing reacting to the syntax proposal says that there might be some inconsistencies within the data presented by the administration. And in taking a quick review of their package, the fire plan and all of a sudden their projection, I raised the question of why the over $70 million that's supposed to come according to their previous uh, public statement from the Racino was not included in their projection. At least it is $70 million under, just on one category, the Razino. So my question to them was, what else did you left off? Mm -hmm. So there was not a projection inclusive of the truth and the facts. I have a problem with that. Richard Dorsey, News 2. Senator Hansen's statements echo sentiments about the actual state of the Virgin Islands economy and what steps will be needed to make the course correction towards prosperity. Well, five members of the 32nd legislature organized and named Senator Positive Nelson as minority leader. Senators Alicia Chucky Hansen, Jeanette Millen Young, Dwayne DeGraff, Trigenza Roach, and Positive Nelson. They have gotten together as the People's Force and have organized in compliance with Section 305A of the rules of the 32nd Legislature. The newly organized Minority Coalition will meet the press on Friday, January 20th at 2 p.m. at Earl B. Otley Legislative Building on St. Thomas. They will discuss the governor's proposed tax increases, the affairs of the government, the vacant seats of the 32nd Legislature, and other matters. The general public is invited to attend. In other news, the air conditioning unit at the Charles Howard Complex, located on St. Croix, unfortunately continues to experience technical issues. As a result, the Department of Health on St. Croix closed at 12.30 today and granted administrative leave to the staff. Various programs or clinics have committed to caring for all clients they say before leaving the premises. Due to the AC unit not functioning at full capacity, the department will be open from 8 a.m. to 12 on Friday, January 20th, and Monday, January 23rd, until they are able to resolve the issue with the unit. However, the Maternal and Child Health Program, MCH, they will still be holding the scheduled Shriners Orthopedic Clinic on Friday, January 20th. 35 Virgin Islands National Guardsmen departed the territory on Wednesday, January 18th, to support the nation's events in Washington, D.C. for the inauguration of the 40, 45th President of the United States. Now on Friday, January 20th, Donald Trump will be sworn in as the President and Commander in Chief. Meanwhile, more than 7,500 National Guard soldiers and airmen from 44 states 
three territories and the District of Columbia will serve with the specially created Joint Task Force District of Columbia as a whole. National Guardsmen will augment the U.S. Secret Service, U.S. Capitol Police, and D.C. Metropolitan Police Forces on a range of support, including traffic control, crowd management, logistics, and communication. National Guard support to presidential inaugurations dates back to April 30, 1789. The group of VI Guardsmen consists of members of the 23rd Weapons of Mass Destruction Civil Support Team, the 661st Military Police Law and Order Detachment, the Ministry Team, Operational Planners, and a liaison to the mission. This is the second time the National Guard, uh, VI National Guard, has supported a presidential inauguration in January 2013. Over 50 VI Guardsmen deployed for this homeland assignment for the second term of President Barack Obama. The inauguration of our nation's president is a historical event that spans over a century. That's from the Ving Captain, Mario Brooks, commander of the 661st MP in LNO. He said, to be selected once more is attributed to the professionalism and dedication of the soldiers of the Virgin Islands National Guard. As in all, he said that we do, this is yet another team effort by National Guard. Like Captain Brooks, about 10 VI Guardsmen in this group were a part of the last National Guard contingency to support Task Force DC and, uh, and more. Well, just two days before we are now less than uh, two days from the start of the Donald Trump presidency, presidency and the incoming commander in chief is starting to unveil some more details about his ambitious agenda. Here's more. Donald Trump is about to take up residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're ready to go at 1201 tomorrow. The event that will officially send him there a massive security challenge. We've got to be uh, vigilant, we've got to plan, we've got to prepare. Thousands of law enforcement officers from a range of agencies are working around the clock, but for all the preparation, the event itself will be rather modest, at least compared to recent inaugurations. Fewer big name performers, a shorter inaugural address, one that Trump says he's writing himself. It's going to be a very personal and sincere statement about his vision for the country. I think it's going to be less of an agenda and more of a philosophical uh, document, a vision of where he sees the country. The parade scheduled to last just 90 minutes, not several hours, and only three official inaugural balls down from Obama's 10 in 2009. The excitement being tempered, however, by news that former President George H.W. Bush and his wife Barbara have been hospitalized in Houston. The president is stable resting comfortably in the ICU. He's going to remain in the ICU for observation. Trump tweeting his concern, saying he's hoping for a speedy recovery. Thursday, Trump and Vice President-elect Mike Pence are attending a series of events in Washington, including a wreath-laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. A somber moment, a first in a series of events, marking the beginning of the Trump presidency. In Washington, Diane Gallagher. Meanwhile, President Obama has commuted the sentence of 209 individuals and pardoned 64 individuals, including Puerto Rican Oscar Lopez Rivera. Lopez Rivera has been incarcerated for almost 35 years for his role in fighting Puerto Rico's independence. The 74-year-old will be out of prison May 17th. Keeping our eye on the economy, American Airlines is the latest airline to offer stripped-down airfare for a lower price. Passengers will soon be able to purchase basic economy fares that are the lowest available price, but they come with some sacrifices. Flyers won't get a seat assignment until check-in, can't use overhead bin space, and will be the last group to board. The tickets are also non-refundable and are not eligible for an upgrade. Basic economy fares will go on sale in late February in 10 markets with plans to expand. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with the Stock Market Watch. We can see everything down. The Dow down 72, NASDAQ 15, S&P 500 also down 8. Coming up on News 2, a murder suspect was brought back to the territory after a warrant for his arrest. Plus, Rotary rocks because they are holding a music fest that will raise much needed funds for many organizations coming up.
Welcome back. On January 18th, Isaiah Rogers, 28 years old, was brought back to the territory on a warrant for his arrest. Rogers is wanted for murder in the first degree. Here's more details from the VIPD. On March 11th, 2016, Rogers went to the victim's house, called him outside, and fatally shooting him multiple times. The incident took place in Castle Coakley area in the vicinity of Thomas Bakery. The VIPD investigators were able to locate the suspect Rogers in Sanford, Florida, secured a warrant, made contact with the Sanford Police Department, and he was detained. No bail has been set for Isaiah D. Rogers, pending advice of rights hearing. Some of these arrests are made possible by the community's effort to share with the investigators. The VIPD will continue to do its part, rounding up criminals off the streets. Call the VIPD on St. Croix at 340-778-2211, on St. Thomas at 340-774-2211, Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. The USVI Department of Health's Zika surveillance report for this week shows an increase in positive cases reported among pregnant women. However, they say these new positive cases are due to a three-month lag in the reporting period, not a surge in new reported cases. The lab test used to confirm positive Zika infection can detect infections that occurred up to three months ago. The test itself takes several weeks to complete, and this week's newly reported cases among pregnant women reflect infections that occurred in August to October, which overlaps with the most active period of reported cases of Zika to date. The Department of Health continues to urge pregnant women to strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites and sexual transmission of the Zika virus, and we will have those numbers for you on Friday's newscast. Well, members of the National Youth Cyber Education Program competition, Cyber Patriot, will be honored on Friday, January 20th from 5.30 p.m. to 7 at the St. Croix Career and Technical Education Center's Room J14. Each competitor will receive a Cyber Patriot certificate, T-shirt, pen, medal, and a cyber pin, in addition to the many tributes from coaches, teachers, school administrators, sponsors, and family members. Four teams representing St. Croix Educational Complex, St. Croix Central High, St. Joseph's High School, have successfully completed preliminary rounds in the Air Force Association Cyberspace Competition. Cyber Patriot beginning, began in uh, November 2016. The teams are the Platinum Coders, Tasmania Devils, the Terminators, and an all-girls team, the Island Defenders. The office of Senator Myron Jackson held a community engagement to showcase the completed drawings of the Danish students from the Aarhus School of Architecture and Royal Academy, as we reported, the Fine Arts School of Architecture to rehabilitate the J. Antonio Jarvis Elementary School complex entitled In Search of Identity Centennial Project. Now, it was on view Wednesday at the Virgin Islands Council of the Arts and today on St. Croix was unveiled. The public was invited to see the completed drawings. The initiative is a partnership with owners of historic houses, Bufo, a private preservation organization who is in town to promote and continue raising for the project. The drawings on display were created, comple were created completely by about 30 students who spent three weeks in February and March 2016 on both islands donating their time to measure and draw the sites which are slated to become a National Museum and School of Conservation of the Arts on St. Thomas and a School of Architecture on St. Croix. More school news, the Ola F. Mala Elementary School, they're inviting the community to its International Night, that's this Friday, from 5.30 p.m. to 9 in the school's cafeteria. The dinner event features local chefs and cooks who will prepare a number of dishes from the Virgin Islands, neighboring Caribbean islands, and around the world. Menu items will include the likes of mofongo, curry chicken, red pea soup, tostones, and pilao. Taster tickets are $2 each and will be available for purchase at the school. For more information, you can contact the school at 340-774-0059. Virgin Islands Tennis Association, they will begin a junior team tennis league in the U.S. Virgin Islands. February 4th, 2017, four teams of players age 14 and under will compete in the league that runs through May. Two teams will be from St. Thomas and two from St. Croix. Teams will participate in intra and inter-island matchups, competing for points to be able to travel to Puerto Rico to compete 
in sectionals. The winner of sectionals will represent the region at nationals. The league is a U.S. Tennis Association sanctioned league and all participants should be a member of OSTA and registered with the OSTA team tennis under junior team. Tennis VI, VITA, is a Virgin Islands nonprofit organization. For more information, you can contact Natasha Lewis Flynn at 340-626-9908. Rotary Rocks, and why? Because they are holding a music fest on the lawn at Yacht Haven Grand this Saturday. The event starts at 2 p.m. and goes until 11. All proceeds benefit Rotary-sponsored youth projects. $10 donation at the gate gets you a free drink ticket, food and beverage available throughout the day. So be sure to go in early and rock out till late with the island's best bands and the event headliner, Van Wilkes, all the way from Austin, Texas. Volunteers are still needed for the two-hour shifts at the event. Here's more. We are really excited about the upcoming Rotary Rocks Music Festival right here at Yacht Haven Grand. It's going to be Saturday from uh, 2 in the afternoon to 11 at night. And it's a really well-rounded, very diverse slate of, of music, uh, musical styles. Uh, we, we have a whole bunch of great, uh, great, great bands. Uh, Lourdes and the Switch. This is the bass player right here, Nathan McGlone. Uh, we have Josh Soljas. We have uh, Third String All Stars. We have uh, the Whiskey Pistols, and uh, Van Wilkes. I'm going to be helping with that out uh, with the stage all day. But as Paul mentioned, we got a fantastic lineup of musicians. Van Wilkes. If you haven't seen this guy, please do come out. He is a fantastic musician from Austin. All the money for this project is pure charity. It goes into our foundation, which goes into the youth for the commit uh, the community. Um, we have several many youth projects and we're looking for new ideas all the time. So this is a 100% charity event and we look forward to seeing everyone there. In fact, I consider we consider that everyone that comes to this event becomes a partner of Rotary in making our society a, a more forward thinking, kinder, more respectful place. Be sure to go out and enjoy the day and support our local bands and the headliner, Van Wilkes. Well, more reliability are plan is planned for the water and sewage company in Dominica in 2017. We have some details in our Caribbean report, including eight water storage tanks. Here's more. more reliable and strengthened water systems on the agenda of the Dominica Water and Sewage Company in 2017. General Manager of Dowasco, Bernard Etinoff, told Channel 5 News that eight storage tanks and five new water systems are expected to be completed this year. In 2017, we intend to make those systems a lot more secure than they are right now. So we have, at the moment, a, a, a program with um, the World Bank DVRP and the Government of Dominica, that is the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction um, Program funded by the World Bank and the government. And so that project is, is seeking to, to develop during the year 2017 eight water storage tanks on the West Coast. He also said that work undertaken to restore water systems in 2016 following damage done by Tropical Storm Erica was temporary. We are also looking at completing the Bell's Penrise Sylvania Despo uh, water system. That should have been completed in October of um, 2015, but uh, because of Tropical Storm Erica, we had major setbacks. Um, the government has facilitated funding for us through the Dominica Social Security to ensure that that project is complete. So that will, will bring a lot, of, um, lot more security and reliability to the water systems in Bells, Penrise, Despo, and Sylvania. Etinoff believes that the island could have 100% portable water coverage by the end of this year. We'll turn our attention back here at home just before we head into the weather. Calling all team captains on Saturday, January 21st. St. Croix's Relay for Life 2017 will kick off. There will be music, food, and fun. Teams will be recognized with certificates, awards, and hugs. All attendees will have the chance to win a door prize. 
Come show your Relay spirit by wearing something purple. This is also a great time to get your team packets and uh, start your fundraising early. This Saturday again, that's 2 p.m. until 5 at the St. Croix Majorettes Headquarters building in Peter's Rest, Christiansted. You can call 340-719-4898 or 340-513-7745 for more information. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather the forecast comes your way next. Well, if you made your way to the Virgin Islands, you could not have picked a better time to be here. Over the next week, we sit in an area of high pressure with calm winds, calm waves, and overall not too much going on. So it's going to be a beautiful week here across the area. We take a look at our current radar, not even a sprinkle really around the region, mostly sunny skies, and that's going to stick around. We take a look at our water vapor map, and as we take a look, we see this area of yellow, the orange, Orange. All of that is deep, dry air. Now the blue is definitely the moisture air, but you can see a lot of that's being pulled off towards our north and our east with an area of low pressure out over the Atlantic. A front actually passed through Bermuda, but we're since moving into some drier air and that's going to continue as well. Mainly clear skies tonight, 70 degrees for our low. And then as we work our way into tomorrow, we'll continue to see our highs in the low 80s from St. John's into St. Thomas as well. It's going to be a nice and beautiful day. You might see a couple of higher clouds, but overall it's going to be mostly sunny. This also includes down into St. Croix. Now out on the waters, beautiful boating conditions over the next few days as well. Waves one to three feet, very light winds out of the northeast, eight to ten knots. I'm telling you, we haven't been seeing this kind of weather for a while. One to three feet on the Caribbean as well. And those winds out of the northeast, just slightly less, five to ten knots. Taking a look at our extended forecast, well, it is what I said, mostly sunny through much of the rest of the week. We might have just a slight uptick in moisture coming towards our Saturday and Sunday. So maybe just a brief passing shower heading towards the overnight hours on our weekend or into Saturday evening, Sunday morning. Monday rolls back around. We're going to continue to see some very nice and sunny conditions with those lighter winds as well. Back to you, Sandy. Thanks for that. It is time for our news weather picture there by Nahelia Giddings of Ricardo Richards Elementary School. Nahelia is so excited about the weekend and heading out to the beach uh, with mostly sunny conditions for now, but just a little slight shower on the weekend. You can go ahead and make those plans. Thank you for that. Send us your news uh, weather picture to the address on the screen and then tune in to see it right here on News 2. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. I'm Sandra Manson. See you next time.